annual ranking of the most admired and most valuable brands in sub-Saharan Africa, Brand Africa 100 measures and ranks brands that consumers admire and their corresponding values. Well, prior to 2011, there was no independent measure of the value and the performance of any brand in Africa, whether local or foreign. Tebe Ikalafeng is the founder and chairman of Brand Africa and chairman of Brand Finance Africa. He joins me now to discuss the business of developing strong brands. Welcome, a big pleasure to have you on the show, Tebe. Thank you so much. Let's start off with your brand, Brand Leadership. What defines you as a brand? Well, Brand Leadership, our organization, which we started 13 years ago, has got a singular vision, and that vision is to inspire a great Africa through brands. We want to use the power of brands to change the image of the continent. Our mission is quite simple, to create great African brands and global, and global brands in Africa. That's a wow vision to have. Thank now, you. you've worked at over 100 brands in Africa. Give us a sense of the diversity of your work when looking at that portfolio. Well, we've covered quite a spectrum. You know, we've done the elections in Ghana, for example, in 2008 and 2012. Because, you know, electioneering is also about branding. Because you are telling a story and you are trying to convince stakeholders to come behind your mission. So we've mm -hmm. done that in, in Ghana, for example. Uh, we've done the University of Botswana, which is in, in higher education. Of course, we've done a lot of universities. University of South Africa, Vers Business School, University of the Northwest, uh, uh, University of, uh, of Namibia, the former Polytechnicon. So we've done a lot of universities. Universities. Uh, we've done uh, the biggest uh, uh, parastatal in Africa, which is Transnet. Uh, for example, uh, we have worked in Ethiopia, we've worked in Congo, we've worked in DRC. We have worked across the board. What is your, your point of departure when working with different brands in Africa, the most given the diversity of your work? The most important thing that I look at, certainly from our, from our organization perspective, is to try and work with those brands which are going to have a lasting impact in the image of Africa, in the competitiveness of the continent. So I'll have to work with what I call transformational brands, those brands which make a real change and a real difference in the lives of ordinary South Africans and Africans across board uh, in, the long run, in the long run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looking at uh, Africa 100, now if we have to look at uh, the rankings of the top brands, what countries in Africa are currently dominating the top brand space and why? You know, given South Africa's history uh, in, as, as an industrialized in, in the continent, South Africa has been the most industrialized and industrializing uh, uh, country in the continent. That's why more than 50% of, of, of the ranking of the top 100 most admired and most valuable brands uh, come from South Africa, the likes of the MTNs, the ShopRites. Those are the brands that you see pretty much uh, everyday brands across the, the, the continent. Mm -hmm. The reason is quite simple. South Africa has had the infrastructure uh, uh, head start. South Africa has had the investment head start. That is the number one FDI country uh, in, in, in the continent. So we've had those opportunities and abilities to be able to create brands, while other countries have, 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 have really dealt with our developmental issues so there uh, is, large. So there is a correlation between growth, development, and skills. Oh, indeed, indeed. I mean, we've got some of the best, South Africa's got some of the best uh, higher education schools. We've got some of the best education in, in brand building. Uh, and, and, that's why, uh, and that's why we've been able to, to build such great brands. But then if you look across the continent, uh, you look that um, South Africa will be number one, yes, followed by Nigeria and then followed by Kenya. And it's quite easy to think about it. If you think about the brands that are across the continent, we think about we think about Mpesa, for example, from Safaricom in Kenya, which is the number one mobile money transfer brand in the world. The number of transactions that go through Mpesa are greater than anywhere else in the world to, uh, put together. And Mpesa is another example of the type of brands we like to work with. Unfortunately, I didn't work with on Mpesa, but it's a transformational brand because when they started that brand, Kenya was 5% and uh, was 5 banked in 2006. Uh, five years later, uh, they went to 70% bank. It's a transformational brand. Mm -hmm. It enables development. It enables uh, a country to communicate, to connect, and to, and, and, and to, do, and to do commerce. Uh, you go across from uh, Nigeria, which have got some of the strongest brands in uh, 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 banking or uh, financial services brands and telecommunications and oil brands in, uh, in, in, in the continent. So you'll find uh, those type of brands in those countries. So those countries, uh, it is by no fault that those three countries are the, uh, the triumvirate of the, of the of the African African economy, uh, if well, those are the countries which set the tone for where Africa is going. So, would it also be conclusive to say that strong industrial uh, brands also lead to strong industrial and national competitiveness? 
indeed, matter of fact, when you look at the ranking of the, the number one uh, most valuable nation brands, they will pretty much follow the similar uh, 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 way. It will be the South Africa, the Kenyas, the Nigerias, uh, uh, the Egypts, uh, which, will, which will invariably be in the, in the top five. But the one important thing that we've, we've, rec we've noticed is that there's a strong correlation between the value of the mo top 100 brands mm -hmm. and the GDP of a country. So as the brands go, as the GDP of a country goes. It's because the brands become uh, the businesses that pay tax, they become the businesses that create jobs, and those uh, and, 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 and as a result, they, they, have an, uh, they have a very, very strong impact in the competitiveness of a, of, of a country. What are some of the common trends emerging now in the space of brand awareness that organizations are focusing on to strengthen their brand value in the markets they're operating in? Well, certainly, uh, to start, many of them are paying attention. To the, uh, to the idea of brands because it is no longer just commodities, uh, products and services they're using. They realize that for a business like Coca-Cola, for example, who more than 50% of the value lies in the brand, uh, so the premium, the brand gives you the premium, but what the brand does as well, if you look across the African continent, 60% of Africans believe in the power of brands. Uh, more than 50% of them say they choose it uh, mm -hmm. because it gives them sense of trust, a sense of, community, uh, of, uh, of, of continuity. So they want to, uh, to buy a Brands. Because what the brands do for them uh, and what they do for a country, they give us a strong identity. They give us a strong a sense of independence and they enable us to reinvest in our countries. That's it. And it comes back to the vision that you spoke about earlier in this discussion, namely social transformation. And that's a big buy-in today when it comes to transforming the company itself. Most indeed. Uh, a matter of fact, you know, if, if, if you look acro uh, across the, uh, the continent, those brands uh, that are leading in the countries are the key brands which are helping, which are paying the biggest taxes in their respective countries. Even a company like MTN, which is South African, is also the leading company in Nigeria and is paying probably more taxes in Nigeria. And those taxes help to transform uh, the, uh, the Nigerian socioeconomic society, just like they do in the South Africa socioeconomic uh, en environment. So it's quite important uh, to believe and to invest in brands. And as Africa, part of the independence of Africa uh, is going to be in our, is going to be led by our ability to invest and to, cre to create and to invest in great brands. Because when we create great brands, we are no longer going to have the necessity, we're not going to be, we will no, will no longer have to export uh, uh, or repatriate profits. Rather, the profits will stay in Africa. And if they stay in Africa, it means there'll be greater development. There'll be more wealthier people. There'll be more people employed. There'll be more taxes paid. Africa will finally be free. Absolutely. That's wonderful. I like how you say that. Tebe, from an internal operationals perspective, what are some of the common characteristics that impact on a brand? So, for example, when it comes to managing people, or any other management policies? What role do these policies play in shaping and making a brand? Well, the, 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 a couple of uh, priorities are important when you're building brands. One is uh, great brands are very clear, they're very focused. So there must be a singular uh, a focus about what your brand stands for. And great, brands are, and great brands do a second important thing, they are consistent. So there's a consistency in terms of how the brand is delivered, uh, delivered across. And third, what I always like to say is that great brands build their country. There's mm -hmm. a strong sense of identity with the country they come from. You think about America, we know the brands that come from America, about Paris, about, about France, we know the made in France, about made in Italy, made in England. We know what those what, what those stand. So we, our focus is to build made in Africa brands. And to do that, we need great uh, skills from our local skills, uh, skills which understand this, the African environment. So you yeah, love what uh, the people at Samsung have, have done, for example. Well, they are built for Africa initiative. They are saying that the products need to respond to the conditions of the country mm -hmm. or the continent where they are operating. So it means from a skills, from an internal skills perspective, we need to find and we need to create education which helps you to understand and to be able to build from where you are while delivering to the world's last standard. Mm -hmm. Looking at all the brands that you've worked with, what are some of the brands that really stand out for you and why? Just to give practical examples of what you just 
said to me. Well, I think I, I, I started with the first one, which is the number one brand in Africa, number one most admired brand in Africa, most valuable brand, which is MTN. I think what MTN has done really well, they've learned from the likes of the Coca-Cola. They are local in the country where they, where they do business. Uh, they empower the local people. They create jobs in the country where they are. But, the, but across the continent, there's a clarity, there's a singularity, there's a common focus of what MTN does mm -hmm. or what the brand does. And, and the one thing that those brands do, they are transformational. Now you look at a brand like uh, Dangote, which is a Nigerian brand, uh, which is also in the top 10. Uh, now this is probably the best example of Africa industrializing. Now I look at Dangote, who's Africa's wealthiest man, has created, uh, taken his name and lent it to a range of brands from cement to uh, to millies to everything. What that shows, it shows the potential and ability of Africa to be able to industrialize and to create strong made in Africa brands. And across the board from the banking brands, uh, Standard Bank, uh, you know, Standard Bank celebrates coming from Africa, uh, being an African brand. It celebrates, you know, they say in one of their ads, they say uh, they call it Africa and we call it home. To me, that speaks to uh, the common thread about the great brands in the top 10, certainly uh, African brands in terms of what they do well. You look at ShopRite, which uh, happens to be a South African brand as well. You know, ShopRite versus Hulu as an example. Hulu is pulled out of Nigeria and ShopRite stayed in Nigeria. Now, the distance the difference that's always been highlighted and, and uh, demonstrated is that what ShopRite tried to do is to understand the palate of the of the Nigerian and to source from where the Nigerians are sourcing our goods and services. Whereas Woolworths wanted to import uh, brands and pr uh, products from South Africa or from those. And when that became costly and prohibitive, but also when it differs with the palates of the local mm. co uh, consumers, it made it difficult for Hulwitz to be a sustainable business uh, in, in, the, in Nigeria. But Hulwitz is a great uh, uh, story. It's a great brand, a uh, great South African brand, great African brand. So the key common threads along, uh, across all those brands is they understand where they come from. They understand their heritage. They celebrate it. They don't have to say, I'm, I'm African but they have to deliver to the African need. And now I know why they call you the African brand guru or the brand guru of Africa. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time, Tebe. Thank you so much. And it's really a pleasure to be here and to celebrate uh, uh, what, it, what makes us great as Africans. Thanks.